Live from the studios of Coefficient Media in Jackson, Michigan, today's show is brought to you by Audible.com and the fine folks at Carbonite. This is the Android App Show, episode number 74. Uh, this is our first episode since Google has purchased uh, you know, a little company called Motorola. So uh, what do you think we're going to be talking about today? Hello, Moto. <laughs> Welcome to the Android App Show. The future of the telephone business is bright and rich with promise for the millions of telephone users like yourselves, whose quick acceptance and ready use of each improvement in telephone service has helped make possible an endless chain of accomplishments. What will it be this time? Welcome to the Android App Show. It's a pretty exciting time this week, I think. Yeah, it's some, awesome. Uh, some major ground shift movements mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, happening, yeah. There's there's plenty of news to talk about. And yes. In fact, uh, I think uh, we're also going to be kicking off the show this week with a new format that we experimented with last week on the yeah. iPad show. We did? So, oh, we did, we did, we did, we uh, did. But first, I'm Dave. And uh, whatever the lower third says at the bottom, it's wrong. It's backwards. Yeah, it, you can pretty much count on it not being right. Yeah. So. Except for when we pay attention. <laughs> obviously, we haven't done that today. Well, you know. But we do have new chairs. Yeah, hey. New chairs and new setup and everything seems to be going pretty well here today, don't, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, well, we tried to do it. We did a couple dry you know, runs and uh, tried to work out some of the kinks that we usually have. And what's so. what I'm most excited about is that I have room here to hold my cup of water or coffee Ooh, or whatever. Yes, just, yes, I'm gonna have to start bringing my uh, sip, sip away. Giant. Well, I'll have to cover up the branding of whatever water I bring, so that way. Right, or or you can have you a know. mug, a studio mug. I could purposely, I could purposely make false brands that are are good water puns, if you or, know what I mean. Or we could have people out there get. Uh, Listeners of the show, fans of the show, send us mugs that we could have on our desk. Uh, yes, I would totally uh, put out on, a, on this little street corner I have right here a mm-hmm. mug. Me too. Uh, for you to display. Yeah, so if you are, if you have a company <laughs> or a app or anything, just send us your mugs. And yes, we'll totally. Put our mu- Maybe not your faces on the mugs, not your mugs on the mugs, but just <laughs> mugs. Yeah. And then we'll... So if you think that's a good idea, uh, the email address is the Android app show at gmail.com. Yeah. And uh, we will we will hook that up right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, something we also wanted to bring up, uh, our sponsors of the show. Yes. Uh, we do have some sponsors continuing to help support mm-hmm. the show. And in fact, you can help uh, support the show by uh, trying out Carbonite. Carbonite is a... Uh, it's an online backup program that takes care of all the files that you have on your computer, uh, whether it's a PC or a Mac, backs them up online to the cloud uh, so you don't have to worry about where they are, what version it is. No, Carbonite keeps everything. And I, I bet you're limited, aren't you, Dave, on how many uh, files you can have? Don't you have to worry about that? Uh, no, because it's actually unlimited backup. Whoa. Yeah. And so far, Carbonite... <laughs> Carbonite has helped over um, 7 billion people. Like, wow. 7 billion files. I was going to say. Not people. I'm not sure we have 7 billion people. But Carbonite has helped back up <laughs> over 7 billion files. So, some of those, I'm sure, would have been lost to time and hard drive failure. Yeah, and we've talked about this uh, on some of the previous shows. One of the main things that people don't think about when they're backing up files is where the file is located. And uh, when you are in a like a business frame of mind, Dave, as I'm sure uh, you know, I you know I used to work at a bank and we had to do co-location mm. of files. Yeah. Essentially, what Carbonite does is it brings this advanced business feature to home users. Uh, so your files are backed up online at a separate location. If anything happens to the primary location, i.e., your home, your files are someplace else. You can pull them up using your iPhone if you have that sort of thing, uh, your Android phone or your BlackBerry if uh, you know you're talking yeah. about that. I don't know. We don't talk about those too much, so true. <laughs> um, but we definitely want you to check out Carbonite. Uh, again, like we said, you can support the show by going to Carbonite.com, signing up, and using the promo promo code TPN. 
mm-hmm. uh, which stands for Tech Podcast Network. Yeah, normally you get 14 free days, but with the promo code TPN, you get two, what, is that real? Two yeah. free months. It's amazing. Two free months. So it, it basically is enough time for you to back up all your files and start forgetting about whether or not your files are backed up. And about that time, they'll say, all right, uh, so do you enjoy this uh, worry-free life that you have? Maybe yeah. you can start paying for it. And it's a very affordable service, too, after that. Yep. So. so thanks to Carbonite for being sponsors of the show. Thank you. And now... We're going we're gonna to we're, switch this up. This is yeah. going to be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Android app news. Yes. Uh, Is there been any Android news this week? No. uh, We had to kind of scrape together some things. Oh, wait a second. The day that we post... See, we record these shows on Sunday. (laughs) And then Google comes out on Monday as I'm uploading the show and says, Hey, guys, by the way, we just made a... We signed a deal with Motorola to purchase Motorola uh, Mobility for $12.5 billion. Buh-buh-buh. Yeah, with a Dr. Evil pinky to the face. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's crazy. <isn't> it? <laughs> uh, for some people, you might not remember, Motorola split themselves uh, a year or two ago into two different companies. One that makes the hardware, yeah. uh, as in phones and set-top boxes, and the other one that makes the uh, cell phone network equipment. Oh, okay. So two different uh, Motorola companies. Motorola Mobility, the hardware, uh, consumer hardware company, let's call them, is what's actually uh, under the agreement to be purchased by Google right now. So the one not being sold, what is the one not being sold? Uh, what's not being sold, uh, they make cell phone towers, okay. uh, backbone equipment for the internet. You think Google might want that too? Um, Maybe. I don't know. They haven't maybe quite. Not yet. not yet. Their tentacles have not extended Their world that do- far. world dominance is not. Yeah. And we, but that's funny to me too because obviously uh, Motorola saw value in splitting them. You know, yeah. to two different companies, and to think that one company might end up acquiring both of those, <laughs> it seems kind of silly. Uh, but it's happened to AT and T before. So why why would Motor, why would Google want to buy Motorola? What is the big deal? Well, if you've been following the news, you probably have heard everybody's take on it. I'm sure, uh, and that covers everything from uh, becoming more like Apple. Uh, some people think they want to get more involved in the hardware design business. Hmm. Uh, personally, I think uh, they want to. Uh, be able to uh, encourage the kind of free design that Apple has. You know what I mean? That outside of the box stuff, and uh, uh, you know, put some more money behind it because, frankly, Android's having a hard time catching up with Apple unless they're just flat out imitating them in the form of Samsung. Uh, so there's that. Um, but the other thing is the patent portfolio, yeah. and everybody's talking. I, I have this thing now. I'm calling it a patent bubble. Uh, all these auctions that are coming up, it never was really discussed uh, as far as a valuation of a company that was being sold as to the amount of patents that they had. Uh, maybe that got down into it, you know, into the nitty gritty with the accountants, but that was never the headline, you know. Right. And with Motorola, uh, this is from memory, so uh, it could be wrong. I think they have fourteen thousand patents, fourteen or fifteen thousand, and another uh, six and a half to seven and a half thousand patents pending. I think it, I think it is seven and a half thousand. So we're talking about a very large hardware-centric patent portfolio. Uh, And when it comes to patents, uh, the thing of them is just about everybody is infringing on somebody else's patent. So we've we've talked about this before. Google really needs to get a hold of some patents to help defend uh, themselves and really Android against this stuff. Uh, you know, these lawsuits and everything that are coming against them. But before now, uh, it was pretty much left up to all the hardware companies. Google didn't have any leverage to put up against these people. Yeah. Uh, so now what I think you're going to start seeing, uh, once Motorola has been fully acquired, which it has not yet, uh, they're just under an agreement to purchase them right now for $12.5 billion. <laughs> billion. Once this once this goes through, uh, you're going to see Google start to make more deals with their OEMs, the the primary partners that are you know producing Android like uh, HTC, Samsung, uh, so that Google will step up and say, all right, uh, just like Apple is doing for uh, the you know the first line producers of the iPhone, like Foxconn and stuff like that. Foxconn doesn't get sued because Apple protects them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Any lawsuit or like Apple says, we are the entity. Then you know, right. and I think that we're going to start seeing some more of that with Google. They're going to step up and uh, really put their name on the line. So some good news for Android. 
you know, uh, in the long term. We talked about, again, it seems kind of like dire stuff uh, for us to say, especially me when, you know, I'm as big of an Android fanboy as I am. Uh, but Android was really in a lot of trouble, you know, in a world with where Google doesn't have the arsenal to defend it. So, and that's where that's what uh, Google's acquiring with them. I see. But there's another little tidbit here uh, that I tweeted about. If you follow us on Twitter, you probably saw. And then, and then now I'm starting to see some articles come out covering this as well. Um, but Motorola also runs a set-top box division. Yeah, they do. And they have a lot of good relationships with uh, provide like the equivalent of carriers. You know, if you think about it in the mobile sense, uh, which would be cable providers. Mm-hmm. So uh, Google, if they play their cards right, they could really uh, use that to their advantage. They could kind of hit the reset button on some of this Google TV fiasco that's been going on and yeah. take the platform in a maybe slightly different direction. You mm-hmm. know, if if they could sign on uh, cable companies like they signed on carriers uh, mm-hmm. for Android, then we could see a totally new game with Google TV. It might not be the kind of game that I as a consumer would like to see in the end because uh, you're going to see lockdown boxes. You're going to see some restrictions mm-hmm. you know, on these Google TV boxes if it does come to fruition like this. Uh, but in the end, if you can root the device, then uh, you can get around all that stuff anyway. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully. Motorola is not the ones who built the uh, web TV, are they? No, that was uh, Microsoft. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking hardware manufacturer, though. Ooh. I could not tell you. Hmm. I could not. Sorry, that's been a while ago. It just... I don't know. I know it was Microsoft that made web TV. Yeah. And web TV was horrible. Yeah. I mean, they because it went in and it, it... Gosh. Yes. I don't even know where to start with it. They, they manipulated all the tables and everything, and... Back when web TV was hot, frames were hot, <laughs> and frames are coming back now too. Yeah, I know you saw the whole Google, the Gmail thing, where they're it's starting to look more like old Yahoo Mail really? with frames and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, but back then, when frames were really hot, Yahoo had them. Um, uh, a bunch of a bunch of us web designers. This is like '98. Yeah, were using frames. That mm-hmm. you know, I remember stealing the code from Yahoo Mail. <laughs> I was just. Uh, building a template this week for an email program not any of our sponsors but it was an email program that only allowed you to design in tables yikes it didn't do any css wow that's kind of scary yeah not cool but back then when again frames were the new hot thing web tv didn't support them yeah. <laughs> it was it was horrible <laughs> i mean it just broke and not gracefully so yeah I never used the no frame tag and then until somebody complained because they couldn't access the site on web TV. <laughs> and you said, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't want you to go to my site. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, the kind of person that has a web TV is the kind of person that would get a hold of you to say, your site doesn't work on the web TV. Did they send you an actual like letter in the mail? No, no, no. It was somebody who uh, talked to me directly face to face. They drove to your house and said, I cannot see your site. Make it accessible to me. Oh, pretty much, TV. yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, anyway, what were we talking about? I don't know. We got way off on that. but We did a little bit, didn't we? But Google bought Motorola Mobility. Of That's course, what this was. is going to keep developing. They've placed all kinds of restrictions on Motorola. I won't go through the whole list, but saying they can't acquire companies. Uh, they can't make all these deals or whatever. There's all kinds of numbers on it. But mm-hmm. basically, they're locking Motorola down, saying... All right, we'll buy you for twelve and a half billion. Stay the course for now, and uh, we'll turn this stuff uh, up. And then there's already been a, a shareholder lawsuit saying that uh, the, it's worth two. This was the weird thing. Uh, this is a forty percent increase over the market valuation of Motorola. Yes. Okay. And a shareholder is suing, saying that they are underpaying. That Google's underpaying. So okay. I don't get it. Um, but they're saying that it's worth too much to google like they could have gotten more money for uh. it but i don't know the the argument uh that i'm hearing and i kind of subscribe to goes like this they probably could have gotten more money they probably could have got it from somebody else but ethically within motorola uh they probably did not feel right 
selling it to somebody else because of what they would do to the company. Uh, Google's come out and said that yeah. they want to let it run mostly as an autonomous unit. Um, I think if anybody else got it, uh, they would have done what everybody's recommending Google do, which is completely dismantle and sell the hardware units and keep the patent portfolio. So interesting. Yeah, but I I don't think that Google's going to do that. Yeah, there's too many other ancillary benefits to having having as a whole company. So hopefully mm-hmm. we will see some of that though. Yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully it will be before <laughs> they uh they buy, they buy the uh, web OS. Yeah, yeah. That's uh. I guess uh, should we move on to the the quicker the I'd, quick news or whatever? Would, do we have that in the quick news? Uh, I I put it on the. We were gonna do a tech show this week, and I put it in there because uh, I figured it was more hardware related. But we'll cover it on this because we're not yeah, gonna we'll do a just tech show this add week. Add it to the end. Uh, well, we know we can talk about it right up front. Okay. Because this is some good stuff. Yeah. Let's uh, do it now. So yeah, the quick news now, and this is the not well, so quick news. Before I guess we get to the we'll call pad. it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll call this uh, the long news part B. Big the big news B. Yeah, big news B. Uh, brought to you by <laughs> the uh, folks at Audible. Is that correct? Oh yeah, yeah. So Audible is uh, it's basically books on tape, but much cooler. So you can go onto audible dot com and download uh, just about any book to your iPod or your Android device. Uh, they do have an Android app that lets you purchase and listen to Audible books. Uh, and if you want to try this out, you can go to audiblepodcast.com slash Android app. Yep. And uh, you can actually support our show by trying it out. The cool thing yeah. about Audible is if you subscribe to it, you become a member, you get a free book every month. And so we're talking about books ranging 20 to 40 bucks. Uh, and you pay, it's about 10 bucks a month for a membership. Uh, so every month you get one free download. And then if you want to make additional downloads, it's either a 20 or 30% discount off uh, the asking price uh-huh. on, on the site. So uh, it's well worth it to become a member. If you're like me and you know you should be reading more, I mean, I read a lot of news, but I know I should be reading more books, um, yeah. but I just I just can't. I'm more of a listener. If I try to read books, <laughs> I fall asleep. Yeah, which it, it, that's great. Some people can't fall asleep when they try, <laughs> uh, but it, Audible Audible is great because in the car, while you're doing dishes, uh, cleaning house, whatever, you can have one earbud in listening to the book. Uh, and again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash Android app. This week, uh, our Audible recommendation is Game of Thrones. Ooh, Yes, yeah. I'm going with an easy one. Uh, unless you haven't heard of it, Game of Thrones is pretty big. I've never heard of it, actually. You haven't? It was great. We watched... Uh, but I just I had showed you that thing where they redid the intro song as a Nintendo uh, track. Yeah. That yeah. was pretty awesome. I want to get that for a ringtone. Um, but it's really big on it's on HBO or Showtime or something like that. Um, but if you haven't seen it, uh, here's a perfect chance to get in the game by uh, going on to Audible and downloading the book. Because uh, when you mm-hmm. sign up, you get your free book right away. So uh, you can go to audiblepodcast.com slash Android app. Uh, sign up and support the show. Uh, Were and, you playing some of it before? Was that the... Yeah. Let me go ahead and bring yeah, up the, that. Yeah. Just to give you a little taste of what what it sounds like. Is uh, this, this Game of Thrones? Yeah. Let's see if we can... Books on Tape it. presents Is it A Game of Thrones. Book one of A Song of Ice and Fire Ooh. by George R. R. Martin... Read by Roy Detrice. It's got some like. I love the re- the, re- <laughs> the guys who read on these. Yeah, it's like oh, this we is a real guy. We should start back. Garrett urged as the woods began to grow dark around them. The wildlings are dead. <laughs> some, yeah, uh, do some the good dead stuff. frighten you? It does so remind me a little bit of just the hint of a smile. some of the Harry Potter Garrett book content. Uh, it's the same guy that reads he all the Harry Potter books I know. Oh, so before he criticized me there, but <laughs> but they uh. It, it some of the like the voice changing and, mm-hmm. and stuff and obviously because it's a little bit British too but maybe that's just my uh, American ear. We'll show them, Garrett said, and if he says they're dead, that's proof enough for me. Nice. <laughs> we'll have no. So cool. check that out, uh, and you can be in with the cool kids on the end crowd. Thanks for Audible sponsoring the show. And Audible dot com or Audible what was that again? Audible, Audible podcast, podcast dot com, com slash Android app. Yes. Cool. More more news. 
Yes, on Android? Uh, this is, a, yeah, it's, it's kind of really on Android. Android. Uh, now, okay. The reason <laughs> I brought it up, this yeah. is my little, like, take on things here. Oh, yeah. Okay. HP. HP has sold, or they they said they're going to be discontinuing all their Palm, or all their web OS devices. Yeah, the which, hardware. Yeah, the hardware. Um, which includes the, what is that new tablet that just came out? The HP Touchpad. The HP Touchpad, which is on sale right now for $99 at Best Buy. Yeah, wherever you and can Target. find it. Best Buy, Target. I don't know if they online. have them here. They yeah. probably are sold out. They probably never got them. Maybe not. Uh, but <laughs> my idea is Android has been having all these troubles with like patents and like the Java compiler and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Maybe they'd be interested in another operating system that they could buy out. Kind of take some of that technology. Instead of the, in, and then incorporating that instead of the Java compiler. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that's true. I think that, that that is I think that's always kind of been the long run for Android ever mm-hmm. since uh Eric Schmidt said, well eventually uh Chrome and Android might merge. Yeah. And everybody said, "Huh? What?" You know, this would be a big deal for. I mean, if they could incorporate that into the Chrome OS, because it's all HTML, like all the Web OS stuff is HTML. Yeah. Or like an HTML language. Yeah, yeah it's CSS and JavaScript and, yeah. and HTML. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah, it's kind of like that that Titanium platform, right? That does uh, multi-platform right. development, just purely in JavaScript. It's good stuff. So. Uh, but the interesting thing about it is they said that they're going to continue developing on web OS. So uh, they're kind of leaving it out there murky as to whether they're going to pick up other hardware manufacturers. You know, you know, maybe some of these people who are upset about Android buying a hardware manufacturer and thinking maybe, uh, you know, because what well, HTC's made a statement publicly saying, you know, we're fine with this. It shows Google supporting uh, Android, yada, yada, yada. Um, but I gotta, I gotta think, you know, Samsung, they have Bada and, uh, HTC kind of doesn't have anything of their own. And of course you talk about, you know, all the smaller ones, uh, this, well, there's a lot of big Android players out there, but they're smaller than Samsung and HTC. So some, some company like HTC could really come in and, uh, produce these, uh, web OS devices maybe and, uh, and do well for themselves. Who knows? But, uh, That's true. Yeah, HP's stepping out of it after only forty some odd days on the market. They say nope. <laughs> but, and the touchpad you know, that was that just launched. Yeah, it's well, yeah. That's why I say forty some odd days in the market. Is that for the touchpad? Yep. Uh, okay. And they're calling it a failure and shutting it down. But you know whatever. One day I remember reading this one day longer than the kin. Ooh, I be, I wonder if there was somebody in the company that said look. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to compare us to the kin if we close before them. <laughs> yeah. And that's one thing that we don't want. I don't know. It's interesting because <laughs> what brought HP to this point was they tried to do the Apple model. They tried yeah. to say, uh, you know, this is, we're going to integrate everything, hardware, software, all this other great stuff. Because, uh, you know, the first they, they started cross-licensing the iPod, remember? Yeah. Uh, and they, I think that somebody over there drank the Kool-Aid. What was it, Lee Apotheker? Uh, that was the CEO for a while. Maybe had the names mixed up. Yeah. Um, but he was. There was somebody that was the CEO of HP for a while that kind of pushed in this direction and said, "All right, we're going to become Apple. Apple's doing it right. That's where we're going to go." Uh, HP tried to do that, and uh, they just did not pull it off. Yeah, so, and it's not least. just. The interesting thing, though, is that it's not just uh, the touchpad devices. It's all computer hardware. So if mm. you, if you, you know, the battle goes back and forth as to whether or not Apple is the largest or the second largest uh, PC producer, if you include the iPad and everything. Um, but if, if you uh, think that they're the second, then HP is the first, you know, they are the largest. Mm-hmm. And while they have the, the largest volume of sales, they have uh, very slim revenues, you know, very slim profit margins mm. on, on those revenues, I mean. So an Apple is just boom, you know, their profit margins on the volume of sales much larger. Mm-hmm. So uh HP even though they are in first place or second place behind Apple, 
then uh, for them to make the decision that no, we're tapping out and we're cutting out of the hardware business right now, it's kind of a it's kind of a big deal. I think. Yeah. I mean, this is like more than Apple saying this is the post PC era. This is what is saying it's the post PC era. If the number one guy says, "Oh, wait a second, no, you know, <laughs> let's get out while this is uh, this is probably about as good as it's gonna get right now." That's that's crazy though. I mean, if it's post PC, like. Don't you think HP would want to diversify? Yeah. Well, what they're doing now, they have this new CEO that came over from SAP, which is a it's a European firm, but it's more of a services central firm. Yeah. And they're moving to the IBM model. They're going to innovate and sell services. Um, but they spun off uh, the... There was a division of HP that they spun off a long time ago uh, that was really... Uh, the the division to they had all the good engineers all the good development you know going on Mm -hmm. and if they were going to try and go the ibm route like they're doing now they should have never spun this company off so and again sorry it's kind of i didn't write down show notes for this because we're doing an impromptu discussion but it is is, it's it's some pretty deep stuff but in the end it's good for android i think Mm-hmm. Because it proves that the Android model is working, yeah. You know, and uh, maybe there's only room for one Apple. You know, there's always only been room for one Apple, mm-hmm. as far as that goes. There hasn't been, a, you know, there's been Windows diversified hardware, and there's been Apple Monolith, and now right. we have still Apple Monolith, and Android diversified hardware, and HP said maybe second Apple, and yeah, nope, shut nope. up. So that's so that that blows my mind. Yeah. But hopefully uh, Google will keep sticking out. It makes me feel sad inside. Because out of all the platforms, I liked the idea of WebOS the best. Oh, like I've said this before. WebOS is very impressive. Yeah. And I think that it's not even the execution that they'd screwed up. Coming out on tablets first instead of phones first was the best thing that WebOS could have ever done. Because Android had stolen all the thunder. Yeah. There was no oxygen in that environment. They were yeah. not going to get in you know, sideways and pry open that market. And iPad is dominating the tablet market, sure. Mm-hmm. Android's trying to catch up to them. But Android is in the tablet market. It's nowhere near what it is in the phone market. So they really had a chance to get in there and define another space. It and then maybe trickle down to the phones. But... <laughs> Frankly, they did not invest the time. The hardware costed too much. So you're going to spend 40 some odd days on the market and then consider something a failure. Yeah. You know, there's only like 25,000 of them sold. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me that like they had a chance to be the number two spot. Well, it just is. a. It's like a it's like a soap opera. The, the whole web OS thing. Yeah. Because they, they really it was a palm thing and when it first came out palm like palm was almost dead yeah they came out with web os it was like their last gasp which and it, and was, it was good it was awesome and people were super excited they just took too long to come out with the phones yeah the hardware was lackluster uh-huh. and, and they didn't refresh they didn't refresh it fast enough number 2 and then they sold yeah to hp and then that started all over again. Then it took too long for the the tablet to come out. Yeah, if HP so. could have, you know, if it would have happened a little bit differently, I think like the, if the way that you know you remember when Apple came back because Microsoft or or Bill Gates or something, I don't remember exactly how that happened. Invested money in Apple to keep them going. Yeah. Um, but if a company like HP would have instead of wanting to just take over the whole dang thing, would have said, "We'll throw in a bunch of cash and we can make deals and stuff where you work with us." Yeah. Uh, then and let Palm go on their merry way, again, they could have been a real player. I think that they would have been uh, more successful than, like you say, selling out and then having to reset the clock. Yeah. That hurt them. That hurt them bad. Yeah. So maybe now some quick news. Yes. Uh, <laughs> speaking of hurting bad. Yeah. Dell, their, uh, the Streak 5, no more in America, not coming to America. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, they cut that off, and they they said they're going to stick with the Streak 7. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, And there's also uh, 10 uh, news came out that this week. Uh, 10 Android apps account for nearly 50% of all use of uh, uh, for users. 
You know what yeah. I mean? So they only focus on on ten, and then the rest of the half is like, you know, every now and then they'll mess around with some other stuff. Mm-hmm. So when uh, of course when Google uh, shut down their Google Labs, uh, that meant that App Inventor uh, kind of got put on hold. Uh, well, now they're saying that uh, they're going to go ahead and uh, gift it to MIT Media Lab. So, mm. uh, and, which is weird because the guy that was on hiatus from MIT uh, at, and he was working at Google uh, came up with this app inventor and it was based on something that had previously been worked on at MIT. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's kind of going back home. Yeah, oh. um, the next one is uh, Purdue. Uh, there's a Purdue team to, uh, of developers who've made an app to decipher graffiti. Uh, and this is for police officers, uh, pretty much, or I guess anybody that wanted to. Um, but it, it's kind of like an image learning thing, uh, so that it, you know, like how Google Image Search works, and where it can, it can recognize pictures, like the what is it, Google Goggles, I guess. Google Goggles. It's like Google Goggles for graffiti. Try saying that ten, ten times fast. Google Goggles. Uh, but you can take a picture of it. It'll tell you what gang, uh, what the intricate uh, parts of the symbols mean. Like really, yeah. Dude, I could use one. There's that one around town. In yes, Jackson here. but that's not a gang. That's the <laughs> that's like high schoolers. That's just some stupid. And who knows if it's even one person? It's kind of like snowballed out of control. But yeah. if you want to get my wife off on an angry tangent, <laughs> bring up that uh, despicable me guy. Because yeah, she's uh, like, they they did it on the AT and T store before they even opened the store. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, and she's like, that's what's making Jackson look bad. I'm like, honey, it's got to get in line behind a bunch of things. No, it's what makes us look cool. It's street art, man. It's, yeah. It's like Banksy, but like and then poorly you, done. Have you been down, uh, uh, was it North Street or, or Ganson uh, by the Armory Arts? Yeah. Where they've got that whole long, somebody uh, did a whole long graffiti uh, manifesto or something. <laughs> and then like the guy came by with that saying, with that despicable me thing and said, I agree or yeah, or I think so too or something. <laughs> so some crazy stuff. That's funny. But yeah. Anyway, we won't borrow you with that. We're back to the news. Uh what else? Uh well it will touch base back in again on the, the touchpad. Even though it's been discontinued, there could be hope in the form of an app player, uh like what Rim is working on for their new Blackberry seven OS. Mm-hmm. Um and I put a, a link up in the in the show notes uh, uh that goes to an interesting article about that. And uh, we were going to cover on the uh, tech show, so I'll bring this up real quick, too. Uh, there are actually people who are working right now to port Android no way. to the touchpad. So uh, you could, if you got the deal, if you got a $99 touchpad, oh. uh, it's pretty good. 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor or whatever. Yeah. So it should run Android pretty smooth. Uh, it's just getting those, uh, you know, the hardware supported. And, of course, Honeycomb's not open source, so it's going to be Froyo or Gingerbread. So... Sorry, guys. Yeah. But uh, that is, uh, that's is—that's the news for this week. Very cool. And uh, like I said, this is a change-up, so we're going to do some app review uh, coverage. Yeah. I think. I think so. Awesome. Was, oh, we already did that. Yes, thanks Audible for supporting us. <laughs> the app news. Now. Android app, app reviews. reviews. Yay. <laughs> uh, cool. So this week, again, we're going to be covering some honeycomb app reviews uh it's been a while but we've been doing them for a couple weeks in a row now because we have this tablet Mm -hmm. and you know hopefully someday i'll get my own honeycomb tablet but whenever i get a tablet like this i like to uh throw the deluge down on you uh so the first uh app that we have coming up this week is a home replacement for honeycomb uh that has just been recently updated uh profoundly I really like what they've done with this. Uh, it's called ADW Launcher EX, and we've probably reviewed this before on the uh, on the show. But it's been, of course, for the phones. So, uh, but now they 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 kind of expanded because you can make these apps, you know, like they do for the iPad. They're you know plus apps or whatever they install both on phones and on tablets. Uh, and so, but on the tablet, eh, they they have a slightly different. Uh, form factor uh, some of the familiar things that you know come on the on the regular app uh, for phones but a little bit different uh, and it's $3.30 worth it so worth it 
let's come up here with the uh, with the gadget cam. There we are. Beautiful. Mm, yeah. So they kind of redesigned it up here along the top. Uh, it looks a, little, a lot more like uh, honeycomb. Uh, I had to do some hackiness, you know, some weird hacking on here before to uh, do things like open up the app drawer easily. I'd put like a, you can do gestures like swiping up and swiping down, and I had to open up the app drawer to go through apps. But now uh, I changed it to assign to a dock that can pop up on there, and you can put whatever apps you want in there, and then you just swipe down, and it hides it again. Uh, but there's all kinds of uh, transition effects that you can put. Uh, this right here is like a, I think it's called tilt. But if I come up here to the settings, uh, this is the one error that I found with this app. A lot of times uh, this menu up in the top right, when you click on it, uh, it goes off screen. It's only half on screen, half off. Uh. So and it's not just that, it's, it's everywhere. And every now and then it'll appear correctly. Uh, but then you go to ADW settings. And I believe it's UI, screen, nope, I'll go back. It's general behavior, animations and effects, screen transition effect. And there's just tons of stuff on here. So let's try cube. Go back home. And then now when I switch screens, it looks like a Mac. Ooh. You know, when they change profiles. Yeah. So that's pretty nice. Tons of stuff. The original, the the launcher that comes with Honeycomb, doesn't have anything like that on there. Yeah. Uh, you have your app drawer on the top left up up here. You can click that and uh, and then swipe through all the apps that you have installed. And go back to the home screen. Uh, the second option brings up uh, the options to change your wallpaper. That's kind of cool. A search button. Uh, it just kind of it blanks out the screen. I kind of don't like that where it just yeah. has the search up there. Uh, but you can search whatever you want. That's cool. And it comes, you know, it does the suggest and it goes through the, the history over there too. Cool. So if I start typing Android, I wonder if it'll register that. Android app show and go. It'll go online. There we are. Boom. Cool. So you can the fourth thing up here is to edit, and that is for editing your home screens. Hmm. So you can like right now, uh, this. Let's see, this is set as my default home screen. Let's say I wanted to make it this one. Just hit that button up top, default home screen. Say so you want to add another screen in. Boom, there you go. And you can click down here and uh, and move them around. So that when you go back home, uh, which I believe is just the back button, I now have this set as the default, and I got all these home screens. Cool. I hit home button again six different screens now because I added an extra one. So it shows all the previews. That's that sense preview. So it's kind of cool. Uh, when I first started testing the Motorola Zoom, uh, they didn't have any home screen replacements. So it's nice to see ADW uh, really stepping it up. And of course they put, uh, you can get, go, get to the uh, settings from up here as well. So if you're used to getting to that through a menu on your home screen, instead of having to go down here and click on that and then click on settings again. So it's a little bit a little bit quicker access. Also, if you're in your app drawer, uh, on the far right, there's a wrench. And uh, that'll take you right into your app settings so that you can uh, add, or excuse me, you can uninstall or uh, clear data, uh, manage all kinds of different app stuff right inside there. Or as you could see, I pull it up again. Down here along the bottom, it shows you how much you've used of your internal storage and how much is free. You know, so that uh, as if you go through and start managing, you know, your apps, if you're running out of space, you can see exactly how more you need to uh, take care of before you're in a good place again. That's always fun. <laughs> yeah. Going in and cleaning out the apps. Um, but like I said, there's, there's gestures on here. So if I go into ADW settings again, 
Uh, this is the ADW settings menu. Uh, and underneath, I think it's UI or no, 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 no. I always mess that up. General, they have gestures, uh, home button binding, so that when you press home, uh, you can choose all kinds of different uh, stuff that could happen. It could open and close the dock bar. Um, but they have stuff like uh, move to default desktop slash open notifications, which would mean like you once you hit it the first time, it goes to the default desktop. And then if you're on the default desktop and you hit it again, boom, notifications come up. So and then you have swipe down and swipe up actions, which I set for the dock bar. But again, there's all kinds of other cool stuff that you can uh, set for that. Uh, and again, the animations and effects, uh, that's where you set things like the desktop bounce, uh, which when you flip home screens, it, how much it goes past it and then uh. kind of settles back, you can tighten that up right there. Huh. Enable and dis uh, like turn on and turn off the sense previews. Uh, some people really don't like those. And let's see, I'll go here into the UI settings though. You can go, icons have uh, color press options. Uh, that you can set for them so that you know when you when you touch them they have different stuff that comes up uh the main dock uh for honeycomb it doesn't use the main dock so that's only for phones it, it would be nice to see if they can kind of disable that especially since they say uh here that the hidden dock is uh <laughs> set on is the is the one by default yeah. in honeycomb but under screen preferences you can increase or decrease the amount of icons you can have per screen. So you could make your tablet look more like an iPad or you could totally, you know, beef it up and make it look like a desktop computer where you could fill up the right. entire thing with uh with stuff. Hmm. So and I have this desktop desktop indicator turned on. You can turn that off and change how you want it. You could make it look like the iPad or like I had the thing uh that's a little bar that scrolls along the bottom. Yeah. And your trash can you can change whether that's on top the bottom or not even at all uh like on on mine here uh, if i long press on an icon and let go it should pop up with the menu huh that's weird it did before the update maybe there's some maybe there's some weird uh thing that changed are you long pressing it long enough Oh yeah, you can feel it vibrate when it oh. when it clicks. So maybe there's a setting I have to re-enable, but when you long press, it's supposed to come up with the menu. Mm. It says, "What do you want to manage this or edit or?" Because yeah. then you can edit and rename uh, an icon if you want. Dang. But that's ADW, and again, it's three dollars and thirty cents. Uh, kind of similar in some ways to what the default home screen is, uh, but you get all these extra transitions. Uh, which on these Tiger 2 tablets look really well. They perform very well. Yeah. So uh, I highly recommend it. And you can customize your home screen however you want. I mean, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. That's a big deal. Yeah. I like it. So we do have another Honeycomb after review this week. Uh, this one is a game. Oh and goodness. it's called Bouncy Mouse. I, I keep wanting to call it a Bouncy Mousey. But I don't know. <laughs> That's because I've been uh, hanging out with the kids too much. And <laughs> <laughs> a bouncy mousy. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, launch this up. This one's free. And the content is ra it's rated for everyone, too. So huh. it's friendly for the kids. It is ad-supported, though. So let's, uh, let's put some music on here, though. Hmm. Not yet. So there's three different levels. I played through the first one, and you swipe up to go to the second one level. And I'm right here on five out of ten. And then there's a third level after that. And then they're going to have more coming later, they say. Uh, but when you're up at the first level, if you swipe to go up again, uh, you can also customize uh, your... Uh, your guy. So like I put a sombrero on him and an eye patch. Uh, and you can change what the, the trailing thing is colored. Like I have green, but you could make it red if you wanted to. Yeah. So I'll swipe up. And I'll start this first one here just to show you the uh and they do kinda they do kinda like an Angry Birds thing here where they tell you yeah. the 
plot line. the story, but you can skip it, unlike on Angry Birds. <laughs> the point is to get over there and hit that cat. And this is like a series of Angry Birds games. Uh, the first one, it has the arrows to tell you, but you draw back on him, let him go, and you eat the pieces of cheese between these green pegs. Hmm. And you want to launch towards a green peg because that's what he'll attach to. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see, I'll launch down this time and bounce back up to get those pieces of cheese. Uh, But if you, like, I knew there was a thing down there, but you can zoom out Mm -hmm. uh, to see the platform if you're not for sure. And let's go there. Whoa. And bounce off of that. See, it kind of gets you used to bouncing off of things, Mm -hmm. and then you got to go let the cat eat you. Nope. Kaplow. Steal the cheese. So 100%. Nice. So let's go back here to these levels. Once you get to, uh, uh, once you get to the, uh, let's adjust the brightness. We're getting a little bit of a issue on the camera. There we go. Uh, once you get up to the second level, though, they start introducing some <gasps> more complicated things. Like I've got to launch through this, just right. Oh, let's try that. There we go. Very nice. And I've got to bounce up off of that to get. Over here to this, Ooh. and then get these. Oh, I missed it. Oh, you missed one. Let's go back. So then I'm going to go down, back to that. Whoa. And then I have to launch over, bounce off Through this other wall, thing? and up. Oh, but I missed that piece of cheese, too. Go bloop, right oh, in the water, right in the I water. died. And then it'll, it'll respawn you back on the last green peg that you were on. So let's see here. Bounce that way. Oh. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. It doesn't uh, degrade naturally. You know, uh, when you bounce, uh, gravity is supposed to slow you down. Uh, on this game, when you bounce, it speeds you up. And that's that's just a, a practicality of the game because, you know, they don't want to lose uh, your your momentum. There we go. Stuck all the time. Finally have sound. Peaceful music. We're going to get 77% of the cheeses. Let's jump up here to this last uh, level I was working on, though. Cool. A little bit more complicated, this one. Brighten this up a little bit. That is the nice thing about uh, Honeycomb. It's a lot easier to adjust the brightness on it on the fly. So, on this one, I have to catch that blue peg that's going up and down. If you can see it there. What are go. those other things floating around? Uh, these are bees, and they want to kill me. <laughs> Oops. Oop. Right in the drink. Ooh, and the blue pegs don't save your, uh, like your place, though. It has to be a green peg. Now this is interesting. I have to shoot just below those bees to get down there. But look, see how they move around? Yeah. Just a li- ever so slightly. You really want to wait for Whoa. the right time. Almost yeah. in the water there. I'm gonna launch up there. I have to just I have to bounce off of that and go over. So let's see if I. It's almost like playing pool. But I'm not this good at pool. I mean, I'm not that great at this game, but I'm not this good at pool. (laughs) (laughs) And this is not a barrier, this tree. Uh, It kind of looks like one, so it can confuse you. Uh, But I have to bounce off of that to that, and then somehow get up there. So let's start this out. Oop, missed it. No, he's he's trying to swim. No. Couldn't make it. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. In the drink again. These are my lives up here counting down. Yeah. Counting down ever so slowly. Oh, man. I hate doing that. You're not so good at this. Yeah. And then it'll start me back at the very beginning. Oh. So if you pause it, you can start over, go back levels, you can Mm -hmm. mute the sound or get help. Uh, The help is really pretty simple. (laughs) Pull back, aim for cheese, hit the cat. (laughs) So, uh, let's go back here to the, to the this one has a lot of uh, blowing on it. The uh, 
Like you gotta do a lot of floating around. Huh. So it's kind of interesting. Cool. I'm gonna try and skip over some of these things if I can. Let's see, it puts you in like a chamber. So you have to go up and down. Mm. So let's get up here. Uh, but then you have to do things like fire directly down towards the ground. <laughs> See, it doesn't quite work out like you think it should all the time. <laughs> and there we go. Nope. Oh, come on. Hook on it. Come on. <laughs> Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> See, but then this one, I got to do it around this bee. <gasps> oh, my God. No way, you just did that. <laughs> oh, and there's no In the drink. Oops. Uh, this one I gotta do off the wall. Whoa. Well, oh, maybe this will help improve my pool skills. Maybe. The music is beautiful. There you go. <laughs> So this ad supported down there, but it's yeah. free. So what do you really want? Now, do they have a paid version? No. No. Just bouncy mouse with ads. What if you click the X next to the ad? Uh, well, yeah. See, I think that you can uh, do an in-app purchase. How much is that? Uh, is it ninety-nine cents? Yep, ninety-nine cents. Well, that's not bad. So it's pretty cool, and then that just goes away on the bottom. That's cool. So I don't know. That's a nice uh, business model, I think. You know, yeah. try before you buy and get rid of the ads for 99 cents. I agree. Why so not? It would have been nice if uh, Angry Birds had did that instead of charge everybody and then just put in ads and go free. <laughs> so I'm not bitter about that at all. I can tell. That was, but Well, that was for the iPad, though. It seems like you should be more upset mm. than I am. <laughs> eh. You moved on from Angry Birds, huh? I've had worse things happen. That's true. That is true. When it comes to iOS, that's probably low end of the spectrum it is uh so i think that's everything that we had to cover this week uh cool i kind of like ending with the app reviews like that i think it's a little bit better uh yeah format so but let us know what you think uh visit the android app show.com you can check out past uh, episodes and you can also click on links to our social networks uh like twitter and etc and you know get a hold of us and tell us what you think uh, we also have a link to our app uh, we are the android app show with our own app uh, of course, with our app, you can watch all of our episodes and read show notes and all the links uh, to the source material are clickable so you can read uh, the stories that we get our information from as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's even market install links in there so that if you want to install these apps and you, you, know, you don't want to look it up, boom, you go into our app and it's done. Beautiful. So just like that. Well, that's cool. If you want more information about uh, Android throughout the week and one show week isn't enough for you, we're always on Twitter. That is at Android App Show. Just follow us on Twitter. We like to tweet out a couple things. Lane, he's he's all over that. Yeah. Some that's, weeks more than others, but that's Twitter for you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But always when the big news is there, we're yeah. all over it. Totally. And we also have our own YouTube channel. So if you enjoy viewing videos through YouTube, you can watch our videos on YouTube too. Also, yeah, full episodes. We're not yeah. limited to 15 minutes on YouTube. That's good to know. YouTube.com slash The Android App Show. And uh, you can really get some interesting stuff on there. Subscribe, whatever you want to do there. And we are part of the Blueberry Podcast Network. So uh, if you like this show, there's other shows that are like this. Uh, there may even be ones about Android. I don't know. I haven't checked it out. In a Maybe, while. but tons of different topics. Yeah, there's tons of other things. Um, that's blueberry.com, and it's kind of like the independent media platform of the new century. I like it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. He was working on that one. <laughs> yes, sure. Um, all right, I think that's it for the show this week. Let yeah, us know what you think. It was a good one. I, I I, I'm calling awesome. it already. It's good. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. So thanks for uh, joining us, everybody, and we'll see you next week with some more Android stuff. I'm sure there will be plenty of news to talk about. Yeah, yeah I'm sure somebody's going to sue somebody else. <laughs> more litigation. You can always count on that. <laughs> Man, those shows like This Week in Law, they've got to be like 
Is that more such and a more thing topic this week in law? There is. Yeah, there's always somebody getting sued. So this week in law, that's gotta be, be an easy so one. <laughs> boring. I don't know. I don't know. Sounds that's pretty exciting. But I am a nerd, so. <laughs> yeah, we all are. Oh well. See you guys later. I love it. I love this new setup.